Hello everyone and welcome to my tiny time adventure. I'm Marcia Fulton with the Extreme History Project and today we're going to talk a little bit about my historic home here in Blue Hill, Maine. Uh, as you can hear we're on a bit of a busy road so um, I'll try to speak over the traffic when it comes by. Uh, this is the home here. It was built in 1790 by Ebenezer Hinckley, one of the founding families, the Hinckley families of uh, Blue Hill. Uh, and it's a beautiful farm area. You can see we have two fields and some woods. My husband and I have just recently planted 200 apple trees in our field over here and uh, hopefully we'll be making some yummy hard cider down the road. Uh, this is Hinkley Ridge Road, named for the Hinkley family, and it goes uh, about three miles down into the town of Blue Hill. Now we're going to take a look at the outside architecture a bit. It's a traditional New England farm home, uh, known as a continuous barn or a connecting barn, uh, which was pretty common. Uh, back in the day. The house was built in 1790, as I believe I mentioned, and the barn is connected to the house. This was a pretty traditional way of building these uh, farm homes. Uh, the winters here obviously very hard, very difficult, uh, and having the barn connected made uh, getting your milk and uh, getting your eggs in the morning a lot easier than having to go outside the house. Um, some of these barns were connected also by just expanding homesteads as the house grew. They eventually connected to the barn, but this one was built uh, already uh, uh, connected to the house. Um, it's a traditional Cape Cod home uh, with a very uh, steep pitched roof um, and uh, an attic space above that would have been used for sleeping. We have a bedroom up there as well. Uh, ours has been uh, a bit expanded in the back to give it a little more space, uh, but main living space is on the first floor, and we'll see that in a bit. Before we go inside, though, I want to take a look at two really important historical features of this property, um, and these are these two spectacular trees. This is an oak tree, uh, and this tree over here uh, is a beautiful elm. You can see it's just massive and huge, and it just keeps going up and up and up. Uh, this tree is said to be the oldest tree in Blue Hill, and you can see how uh, it interacts with the architecture of the house, as that at some point in time, they needed to make some space uh, as the tree continued to grow. So uh, some of the exterior um, boards have been removed to accommodate the base of the tree. Uh, if you look over here, this is uh, the original well to the property. We no longer use this one. We have another one, um, but it's a really lovely old feature um, uh, to this uh, property, so it's great to have that there as well. Um, so let's go take a look inside. The house was uh, in pretty bad condition by the end of the 90s. And a woman purchased it with, along with her son, who was a contractor. Um, and they did an uh, incredible restoration here of the property. Uh, and so you'll see a lot of the original features um, and some really uh, unique detailing as well. So as you come in, this is our little entry space. Uh, and you can see it's a, just a great little utility space for storing things. I just want to take note of our our beautiful um, coat rack that we have up here. Uh, that was a board that we found underneath the barn. Uh, so very, very old, probably original to the property. Uh, and now we've made a beautiful use out of it as a coat rack. We're gonna start in the left side of the house and take a look at the barn area. This is our utility space in here. And we're going to take a look at a map uh, of where we're located in a bit. But I want to just pick, make a note of this particular map, which shows Hinkley Ridge uh, here. And you'll take a look at the uh, uh, where that uh, is located on the larger map in a minute. Um, but at, and at the crossroads there, it's known as Hinkley Corner uh, because Ebenezer, who built this house, and his brother owned the two properties right at the corner of this uh, these two crossroads. Um, now we're going to go into our barn, which you can see is quite large. Um, 
and un at the moment uninsulated, but it's a traditional post and beam barn. These are the original beams, or several of them are original. A few of them have been added for structural support, as the roof here had caved in when it was purchased in the 90s. Um, so that was all part of the restoration. Portions of the floor are original. You can see the floor there. Uh, and we're going to um, be adding some more flooring on this side. At the moment, it makes a great storage space and utility space, but we're hoping at some point to make it into a, a great uh, cider house and cider tasting space. So if you're in the main area, you might want to stop by and have some of our yummy cider. Um, we've got a storage shed and a wood shed right out the back there. And uh, you can uh, come right on back on in here, and we'll take a look at the uh, main living space in the house. Right off the bat, you'll notice a unique feature of our, our main door. This is the door into the kitchen. First of all, the hardware is uh, believed to be original, as far as we know. Um, and the door itself is very old. Um, and it has this very unique window. And as we come in, we'll take a look at it from the other side, too. Um, we don't really know the story on this window, um, but I wonder if it is connected to the Vermont tradition of the witch window. Uh, witch windows were usually rectangular windows set at an angle, usually under an eave at the top of the house. Uh, and they were said to uh, protect the house from witches flying through on their broomsticks. Uh, hard to imagine that that uh, uh, would be the case, but certainly with this window, um, but it's an interesting feature to this beautiful door. Uh, so we've got that going, and we've got some beautiful original hardware here as well, um, and a lot of the original uh, woodwork and wood trim, which is really cool. Um, we'll take a look around the kitchen here, uh, and you can see uh, some other original features. There's some original wallpaper uh, at the top of this piece of uh, paneled wall. Um, and you can see we've got little touches of these original uh, wallpapers throughout the house, which is really cool and interesting to take a look at. Um, and it's a fairly large kitchen with a lot of great spaces. Um, we've got a great wood stove here, not original, most likely to the house. That chimney was built specifically for the wood stove. Uh, there's a secondary chimney that is the main chimney that was original, and we'll take a look at the hearth that that's connected to soon. Um, we've got a lovely little pantry area where our stove and other appliances are um, with some of the original wood that was brought in to kind of panel this space. Now let's kind of come over here and we'll take a look at some information about the house and the Hinckley family. Um, we're going to first of all take a look at where, where we're located on the map here. So here you can see a map of the U.S. and right there is Blue Hill, Maine as we zoom in. And we can expand this a little bit out so you can see where we are. Um, if you look, there's Providence, Rhode Island. There's Boston, Massachusetts. We're about a four and a half hour drive from Boston up into this beautiful part of uh, the world and it truly is beautiful. Um, this is the Blue Hill Peninsula, no, named for the town of Blue Hill, which is kind of the central town here. And we've also got um, the uh, Mount Desert Island over here with uh, um, Bar Harbor and Acadia National Park, which is just in this area right in here. Um, the house, as I mentioned, was built by uh, Ebenezer Hinckley, and we have a, a bit of a history here that you can see that talks a little bit about him and his story. It says Ebenezer Hinckley was born April 10th, 1761, and came to the neck from Massachusetts with his father, also named Ebenezer Hinckley, and family in 1766. He was the eldest son. The first house was probably built of logs, but the present house is said to date from about 1790 to 1800. He married Elizabeth Coggin in 1786. She was born January 6, 1776, and died September 30th, 1803. He died uh, January 30th of 1842, and he's buried here in the local uh, cemetery um, just down the road from us. They had, as you can see, a rather lengthy list of children, Hepzibah, uh, Wallace, Ebenezer, Lloyd, Andrew, Vespasian, Polly, Elnathan, Roselle, Adeline, Eli and Eliza. 
Al-Nathan took the house after uh, Ebenezer died, and he had multiple children as well, as you can see. Uh, he had two wives. His first wife um, was Louisa Holt, and he had two children with her, Eugenia Adelaide and Sarah Thorndike. Um, and then, assuming his first wife died, he then married Louisa Westcott, and they had two children, uh, or nine children, as you can see. So uh, quite a few children uh, born in this house, which is very interesting, and we kind of love to sort of think about that as we're uh, drifting to sleep in the bedroom upstairs, how many of those children may have been born right there. Um, some more information that we have. Uh, comes from this book um, about Jonathan Fisher. Jonathan was the first parson here in Blue Hill. He was brought up from Harvard uh, in order to be uh, to help with creating uh, the first church here uh, in Blue Hill after the ho the town was um, chartered in 1789. Uh, and the Hinckleys had already been here and settled along with several other families. Uh, and so um, he got to know them quite well. This book uh, is a story of his life. It, he sort of wrote it. Um, it's from his letters and stories. Uh, and he mentions the Hinckleys a few times in the book. Um, right here you can see that he notes um, that he often called upon the Hinckleys, uh, Ebenezer, Isaiah, and Nehemiah, uh, to converse with them and their large families upon religious subjects. So he was here at the house many times, it, uh, it sounds like, and was quite close to the Hinckley family. It was a very small community, and the Hinckleys uh, were one of the larger families here. Um, there were four brothers, uh, as, or three brothers, as he mentions, Ebenezer, Isaiah, and Nehemiah. Uh, and Isaiah, we know, had the farm uh, just up the road next to, uh, to this one. So they were quite close right here. Um, Isaiah, we know, also got into a little bit of trouble. If we turn the page a few pages down, we find um, an interesting story um, when he's talking about some of the punishments for some of the uh, local uh, um, uh, folks that uh, were part of the church. And he notes here uh, um, a particular confession that he had several of the church members sign um, in which they had committed uh, the sin of fornication. Um, and when we look at the signatures, we see Isaiah Hinckley uh, as one of those um, uh, evil doers, interestingly enough. Um, so uh, a little bit of scandal uh, in the Hinckley household. Um, moving on, our house was actually featured in the 2000, uh, January 2000 Country Living Magazine, which is very cool, uh, and we found that out uh, after we'd bought the house. And you can see here uh, the spread in the magazine. You can see that's our door that we were just talking about. In fact, you can see it right there, pretty much the same view. Um, and it, it's a beautiful spread. Um, and shows quite a bit of some of the original restoration to the house. Uh, we'll be seeing some of these. Uh, this view here is the view into the living room right from here, and you can see there's the door that that's showing right there as well. Um, and this is the, this kitchen wall. You can see the remnants of the wallpaper right there, and it's that one right there. So uh, you can see that's very cool to have the house actually featured here uh, in a magazine. Um, we've got quite a few bits and bobs from the property that we've found as we've been gardening and collecting things. Uh, we've got quite a bit in the barn, but here's just a few items that we found recently when we were planting the orchard uh, last spring. We've got a, a piece of metal chain, uh, a good chunk of uh, brownware crockery, um, this possibly a medicine bottle top, uh, you can see the bulb on there, and another um, bottle uh, top as well. So lots of interesting archaeology around here. So let's take a look at some other spaces in the house. Uh, this would have most likely been a dining room. Uh, we're using it, uh, building it up to be a um, office and library, but you can see by the sort of the, the size of, of the space in the middle of the floor here, there would have been a, a large oval rug uh, that was here for however long. Um, we're not quite sure how original these floors were are, but they certainly look like they could be original uh, to the house. 
Um, and so you can see as we walk through here, there's a beautiful hearth right here, which we're hoping to um, uh, put a mantle on and make some use of as well. Um, and my husband's current cider brewing collection. We're very excited. We've uh, been able to uh, pick apples off our old apple tree in the back, which we'll take a look at in a bit. Um, and this is our first batch of hard cider from our beautiful Baldwin apple tree. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. Um, this room also features this beautiful paneled wall, as you can see, and it's got this nice little uh, hidden cubby that makes a nice little storage space. Um, you gotta love these old homes with their little hidden uh, spaces. Um, when we come through this door, uh, again, original to the house with its original arc, uh, hardware, uh, and we come into this space. This is the original entry to the house, which we no longer use. Uh, this would have been the original entry door, um, but we have it closed off and insulated. So we mainly use the door that we just came in at um, off the kitchen. Uh, and this space would have been uh, the entry space. And you can see here's some more remnants of some old wallpaper. This one has a, a bit of a, uh, almost an Asian kind of feel to it, an Asian motif. Um, but that's a really cool feature left. Um, I just want to point out too, going back in here, that we have all the original beams in the ceiling, which are really beautiful uh, and add so much character to the house. Got a beam in here. Uh, and now we're going to move into uh, the guest room. This is our guest room space. Uh, and you can see it's very warm and cozy. Nice place for visiting folks. If you come to visit me, you can come and stay in this room. Uh, and the guest room also has some beautiful original details as well. Uh, these two lovely closets. Um, this one, a nice shelving closet. And again, uh, uh, original woodwork um, and this one also a uh, cedar closet which is really helpful and nice to have so as we move back into the house here into our main space this is the main living area you can see coming off the kitchen we're coming into this main space we've got this beautiful windows to the backyard uh, and uh, original uh, wood floors. Um, they're very, very old. There's not one board that's straight. There's not one board that's not cracked. Um, and you can see they even retain some of the original paint finish, which is a very, very cool detail that we have in the house. Um, but the best and uh, really central feature of the house is this extraordinary hearth and fireplace. And we're so uh, blessed and lucky to have this beautiful thing. So we've got the main hearth here, as you can see, uh, very large. I'll take the screen off so you can have a closer view. I had a nice fire going in here last night. There's really nothing cozier uh, than this beautiful uh, room when this fire is going. We also have uh, a metal hook that we can cook on if we wanted to. So we can put our pot over the, the fire and make some soup or stew if we would like to. That's a nice feature, all original to the house. Um, and we have in here the original beehive oven. We use it for storage now, but you can see uh, it is like a beehive. It's rounded at the top, has a dome top. This would have been where uh, bread would have been made. Um, and below it, we've got uh, uh, some wood storage as well. So this would have been uh, a, an area where cooking would have taken place um, originally in the house, uh, which is really cool and very interesting. At some point, it would be fun to get that uh, bread oven working again so that we can actually make some bread that would be nice um we've got again original woodwork here up around the uh, top of the the mantle and this door is pretty spectacular you can see that's probably original to the house what's also really interesting is that they had to accommodate this beam and you can see how it goes uh, 
at an angle and it just keeps getting wider and wider and wider as you go. And uh, the door also was cut in order to accommodate that beam right along the top of the edge there. So very interesting architectural work there. Now we're gonna come around here towards the back to the back door. We've got a beautiful bookcase here built in alongside this beam. Uh, again, original beams along the ceiling of the house as well. Um, and this beautiful wood paneling uh, in this room. This is uh, our upstairs loft space, uh, which we have uh, multiple uses for. We have a studio space here, and you can see it's a nice big open space, original beam work and the ceiling. And then that's the door that leads into the master bedroom, uh, which we won't go into, but you can kind of get a sense of there. Again, original beam work. Um, we've got a lovely wall of windows here. This part of the house, this wall was popped up uh, in order to accommodate a little bit more headspace. Uh, originally, the, um, this would have been a much, much steeper pitch of the roof line here. And you can see where that's uh, been popped up right along this line here. Uh, the stairs were also relocated. They probably originally would have come up from that front door space that we were at. Um, and then they were put back here and much steeper than your normal set of steps, so, uh, but wider, uh, which is interesting. But you'll definitely get a workout going up and down those steps. So we're going to finish up um, our, our backyard and get a little sense of the property out back. We have a beautiful yard here and garden space. Um, again, uh, our property line goes well back beyond these trees uh, to that field. Uh, and just beyond that field into that uh, wood line at the back, we've got a lovely little swath of woods that goes all the way down here. And then our orchard property right here. Um, we've got lovely garden that's usually beautifully blooming in the spring. Unfortunately, this is January or February 1st today, so nothing's blooming at the moment, but it has been a pretty mild winter. The last feature I just want to talk about is this spectacular old apple tree and it's really what inspired us to put an orchard on this property. Uh, Maine uh, is known for apples. Apples grow here uh, wild and naturally and uh, it's uh, really become quite the burgeoning hard cider scene. So it's really kind of uh, ignited my husband's imagination uh, for cider. But I just want to take a little closer look. This is the tree that we picked our apples on this year. Uh, you can see there's still quite a few left that we couldn't reach at the top there. But um, we got, I think, 35 bushels of apples off this tree, uh, which is amazing. It's a Baldwin, we found out. Um, it's a, they're Baldwin apples, and they're just, I think, the best tasting apples I've ever had in my life. Uh, so we're very excited about um, how our cider is going to turn out. Um, but what's really interesting about this tree is that you can see it's had quite a rough time of it. Um, it's been split here, and you can see it's fallen, and yet there's plenty of spurts growing up from the fallen branches that are still producing apples. We picked off of all of those uh, this year. Um, and then we've got little, uh, little growth off of that over here. Uh, so this is just an extraordinary tree um, that it's still thriving and producing apples even though it has split so much. What's also really interesting is it's actually hollow all the way through. This is all hollow in here. Um, you can kind of look down, you can even see daylight. So the main part of the tree is actually completely um, hollow and yet it's still standing, still supporting itself um, over through all these years. I, I can't even imagine how old the tree is. Uh, it's, I love to think that it might be original to uh, the property when it was first built. That would make that tree um, close to 300 years old, which would be quite extraordinary. 
From the back of the house, you can also get an amazing view of that beautiful elm tree that we have in the front. Um, at one point, this entire uh, road was lined with these beautiful elm trees on either side all the way down. There's a few of them uh, that remain. Unfortunately, uh, in the early 20th century, the, there was a really hard-hitting uh, elm. I believe it was the Dutch elm disease that took out uh, the vast majority of these trees. And thank God our beautiful tree was spared. Um, and now we have this spectacular uh, tr uh, tree on our property. So that's our story. The uh, house that Ebenezer Hinckley built. Uh, we're very proud and honored to own it and be its current caretakers. And we hope that it'll last for a good long time. Well, thanks for joining me on our timely uh, short time adventure here uh, up in the wilds of Maine. And make sure you catch us next time. Uh, and I'll be seeing you. Bye for now.